Tennis may look like an individual sport, but behind the scenes there's a team of experts analysing every aspect of the game. With the help of the team behind Britain's top tennis pros, we're going to take a deep dive into all the strategies, techniques and tactics used at the top of the game to help you improve your game. So this visual here shows the win percentage of bounce locations when a player is defending uh, with the ground stroke. Okay, if you're hitting through here, it's going to be very difficult to get the depth. So sometimes increasing the height over the net and remembering the top spin to bring it back down yeah. in the baseline. So we're going to work on that now. Welcome back to the National Tennis Centre for another episode of Inspired By. Now, it's a very grey and drizzly day, but fear not, we will bring the sunshine for you this morning. And the courts are getting that much needed rain ahead of a very busy two weeks of British tennis. This week, we are once again joined by LTA coach Matt James and Tom Callingham, the men's performance analyst here at the LTA. Welcome, gents. How are you today? Excellent. Great. Thank All you. good? Yeah. Now, Tom, busy summer so far. I imagine you've been travelling the length and breadth of the country. Where have you been and what have you been up to? So, I started in Surbiton, then went on to Nottingham and then on to Queen's. And we've had some good results across the board. All right, today we're going to find out how to construct points by controlling depth. Matt, what does this mean? How can you control the game by using depth? So depth being one of our ball characteristics, it's one of the things we want our players to think about when they're constructing points in a game. A little bit like the width, they are very closely linked. Uh, and we're going to see some clips today where, where the players hopefully use depth to their advantage um, and maybe bringing players forward, keeping the ball low on the, on the grass and then actually using a bit of a deeper shot to push people back and, and maybe give themselves a little bit more time. Um, and then create a bit more space. So Tom, why as an analyst is this so important? Like, Show us the results of how this actually does control and benefit the game. So this visual here shows the win percentage of bounce locations when a player is defending uh, with the ground stroke. So you can imagine that the player hitting the shot is down the bottom and they are hitting the ball into these zones. And as we can see, the win percentage of the zone at the top, which is the, the, the highest depth, is much higher than Ooh. mainly into the middle short here. So it just shows how important it is to actually get it deep. All right, so can you show us some examples? So we've got a good clip here of uh, players kind of using the depth and Jan, bottom of the screen here, kind of biding his time a little bit. Both players, that ball's pretty deep. Lean responds in the service box. They go back to a little bit of a neutral one, but this is the interesting one. This time Lim responds short. Jan keeps kind of pressure on him and eventually he gets that opportunity to then change direction from that response that was a little bit shorter. Um, it usually gives them a little bit of a chance to then, to then attack. So Why is Liam not trying to increase his depth or is it that he's not able to? Well, he'll be trying to. He'll be trying to hit as deep as possible. Um, but obviously, he's in a little bit of trouble. The graphic that we saw from Tom earlier, that the shorter that he actually responds, he's more likely to lose more points. So he's, he's not trying to hit it short, but it's the pressure that Jan's put on him by hitting, you know, probably within a metre of that baseline, that the pressure is going to mean that Liam's going to drop more often, he's going to drop pretty short, and Jan's ready to take that opportunity. He understands that the deeper he hits it, he's more likely to get a shorter response. All right, what about using depth in the other way? A short shot, a drop shot? Yeah, so here is the bounce location of the optimal drop shots. The heavy area to the, on the ad court. Uh, this is probably because most players are right-handed, so this is drop shot and into their backhand side. And then there's a small area here um, into the forehand side, but it's much tighter. You have to get it much tighter to the line to have the, the optimal impact. And is that just a matter of like angles and if they're all the way at the baseline, having to travel and get that as the ball is moving away? Yeah, so this is aggregating everything together. So right. there's a lot of different situations. This graphic is just showing the optimal area of where to hit it. If they're already standing over here, then it's probably better to go this way. If they're standing up here, then it's probably better to go that way. All right, what example have you got for us next then? So we've actually got a really good example here of Liam Brody there on top of the screen where he uses a drop shot at the end of the rally, but he also uses, from that first graphic that we saw, where he's in that defensive position, 
and he managed to get the depth. So here he's actually defending really good depth. So what we're hoping that the players can do, obviously it increases their chances of winning the point. But yeah, from here, really good shot into the corner and, and Liam uses that nice drop shot on the backhand side into that zone, which was the heat map, okay? But what's interesting is that he actually doesn't <laughs> win work. the point. <laughs> yeah. um, but that's obviously sport. We could be looking at Liam's positioning here. Could it be a little like half a yard closer to the net so he can cover the cross court a little bit easier? But also he's playing a very fast player on the court. So Liam's put, you know, he's made it difficult for the opponent and sometimes they do come up with, with the good shots. What would Liam take away from this point then, getting closer? Is that what his takeaway should be? Yeah, I think the quality on both shots, obviously he did a really good job with the shot previous yeah, to this the corner. Yeah, all the way down here was amazing. Yeah, and I think his execution perhaps on the drop shot, even though the heat map is saying there, I think Liam probably thinks he can go a little bit shorter than that because of the, the speed of the opponent. Um, that comes into it. If he's playing you know, a much taller player who doesn't move as fast, that drop shot would have been good enough. So a lot of it is around understanding the opponent, understanding the surface, their speed to the ball, and your positioning as well. Gosh, so many variables all the time. All right, Tom, what have you spoken for our last piece of analysis? Finally, we're going to look at an approach here. Um, when we do some analysis on the opponents for our players, we don't just look at where they approach into, but also the response you get from when you do approach. So here, Hoosler will be at the top, and he's going to slice approach into Ryan's forehand side. When players hit a deep approach, the likely response that they'll get is a lob. Matt, why the lob? Why would any player choose to do a lob? Does that not buy the opponent more time? So here, it's almost one of Ryan's only options, really, because of how low this slice is staying to the grass, but then how deep he actually hits it. So as we see here, Ryan actually hops sort of from his left foot onto his left foot because he can't get any weight forward. He's actually got to keep going sideways. And we see that he gets his racket and his hand underneath the ball to try and flick some sort of lob. But what his opponent does really well at the top of the screen is after hitting such a deep ball then, he manages to hit one that's actually very close to the net, which we talk about space on the court. A lot of the time we talk about the width and creating width to make the opponent move. Whereas this is a really good example of using the depth on the court that actually Ryan's a very fast player and he, he can't get there. Whereas we think the opponent's in a little bit of trouble with the backhand smash, but because of the work he did with the approach, he's actually got quite a big space now to hit a quite delicate backhand smash and, and win the point. Thanks so much, that was really interesting to see. Time for me though to try this out on court with my own professional coach, Matt. All right, we're indoors, we're on court. It's quite fun, it's bustling, loads of practice sessions going on. Now can you show me, Matt, what we saw on screen on court? How can I learn to control my depth? So we've seen obviously on the screens a lot around the tactical, maybe when looking at going deep on the court and then maybe short. Yeah, we saw a couple of good examples. Technically though, there are a couple of things to help with when you're trying to hit a deeper shot. So making sure you're not too often in that open stance and muscling with your arm. Actually using your legs and leaning through the shot will naturally push it further. Push it further. Yeah. You'll get a slightly deeper one. And also almost getting under the ball and looking to get a little bit more shape. Okay, if you're hitting through here, it's gonna be very difficult to get the depth. So sometimes increasing the height over the net and remembering the top spin to bring it back down yeah. in the baseline. Boy, there's a lot to think about. There's a lot to think about. All right, and now drill-wise, what are you gonna show me? We've actually zoned out the court for you. Okay, so we're gonna reward you for hitting that deeper ball. Love reward. Okay, so simply three points if you get it into that back zone. Okay, two points in the middle, mm -hmm. and then one point, anything in the service box and just beyond the service box. And then you can make up the game, maybe up to 20 against each other. You got it. Maybe you get to a certain score, you play the point out. So there's a lot of variations you can do with this. Yeah. Um, but the real focus is obviously trying to get that deeper shot in play. Okay, so we're working on the long depth. Let's get on with it. Let's do it. Yeah, all right, ready? Thank you so much, Matt. That was brilliant. I learned a lot and I'm really excited to put those skills into action in a real match. 
Well, that's it for this episode of Inspired By. We'll be back next week with more tactics and strategies from the pros. If you want more exclusive content before then though, do check out Advantage.